Hello and in this tutorial we're going to look at creating HDRI images for use as image based lighting in Maya. So basically what a HDRI image is, is a 360 degree image that we've unwrapped onto a sort of a 2D image surface. Okay, and then we can take these into Maya and use these to actually light up our scene. Um, the main idea of this is that we can light our virtual object up uh, using light sources that we've captured actually on the set where on in the place where we're trying to put the virtual object it will make uh, uh, it will make our, our um, uh, the illusion of the visual effects look much more realistic when we actually go to composite them so um, there's two parts to this one is one is the 360 is actually getting the 360 degree image and the other part of this is that it's a HDRI image what that means is it's a high dynamic range image so if we look at the um, the method I'm going to demonstrate here is there's a couple of methods but the method I'm going to demonstrate here is uh, unwrapping a chrome ball so if we look at the chrome ball images that we've got here these are ones that I took with my students last year Okay, and um, uh, we're going to create the 360 degree image from these chrome, from the these chrome balls. Now, this chrome ball has been shot from two positions, and from each position, it's been shot at three different exposures. And this is what we mean by HDRI, high dynamic range. So, what we're trying to do is have an image. If we're trying to use this as as, as a light source, the dynamic range that we get uh, from a from a normal camera isn't really enough. So what we need to do is we need to increase that dynamic range. So I've done this with the Canon cameras that we have um, uh, that we have at the university, uh, and used the bracketing settings, exposure settings that they have on the camera, to allow us to kind of shoot this at three uh, different uh, uh, three different brackets. Okay, now. Um, what you'll find is this isn't giving us a massive. This is, I've stretched this, as, uh, you know, I've, I've stretched this bracketing on the Canon cameras as far as far as it will go, um, but it doesn't really give us enough of a dynamic range. If we wanted to go further with this, what we could do is um, we could get uh, if, and you've got a ca and you've got a Canon camera, so you can't do this with the university um, uh, cameras, but if you've got a Canon camera your own one, what you might want to consider is going to Magic Lantern. And this is something I've done with my camera. And what I've done is th this is special sort of firmware software that adds a whole load of new features um, to your camera and, and capabilities to your camera. One of them is a sort of more advanced bracketing uh, 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 bracketing uh, 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 options on here, um, which allow you to kind of um, uh, to, to actually take an image up to Rather than using three exposures, you can take up to nine exposures and have a greater control over the uh, difference difference in stops between the exposures. So you, you can actually take exposure um, a far greater variety of sort of dynamic ranges. Okay, so this might be something if you've got a camera for you to seriously consider, a, a Canon camera that's compatible to, to seriously consider. The caveat I would say is that this will, um, if you do this and this breaks your camera, uh, your uh, your camera will be bricked, so that means it won't you won't be able to use it anymore. Okay, and basically you'll have to just go in the bin. Okay, and um, so I'm putting that warning out there. I've I've done it to my camera, and it's and it's and they they've managed to do it reasonably safe in terms of the process of putting this on here without actually damaging your camera. Um, but I put that caveat on there. Uh, it will be bricked, and Canon will not cover it. Okay, it, you will have voided the warranty. Okay, so just be aware of the risk you're taking if you're doing this. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go back to uh, our images. Okay, so first thing I want to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Photoshop to merge these into HDRI images and crop them, and then I'm going to use Nuke to actually unfold the images. Okay, so okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to open up Photoshop. And all I'm going to do is go File, uh, Automate, Merge HDR, HDR Pro. I'm going to browse to our folder where the images are, which is just here. I'm just going to click the first three. So I'm just taking the first three exposures for our first shot. The other thing as well is each of the shots were taken 90 degrees apart. Okay, And the reason for this is, is, is to allow... allow uh, 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 
uh, uh, is to allow for, for, for myself to be removed from the shot, okay? And also, or the person taking the picture to be removed from the shot. And also, you'll find when we unfold this, you'll get some distortion uh, at the edges of the chrome ball, um, uh, caused by the edges of the chrome ball, um, which you will want to also remove as well. So that's why we take it 90 degrees apart, okay? Okay, just bring those images in. I'm going to click OK. Just wait for Photoshop. Okay, right. So, and you'll see here from the histogram what I mean by uh, not using the whole dynamic range here. Okay, so you'll see that. Yeah, a part of the dynamic range is sort of, um, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not using this part of the dynamic range here. So remember, we are dealing with a HDR, a high dynamic range image here. So um, uh, so we, we want to be able to try and use this range. OK, so that but that's what I've managed to get from the sort of bracketing that's available on, on the Canon cameras that we have. OK, so what we want to do is we want to we want to be in 32 bit mode because that's what allows us to ha to create the HDR uh, HDR high dynamic high dynamic range image if we have 8 bit that's just compressing it to a standard range so we stick with 32 bit we click okay and then creates the file for us so this is our high dynamic range image here okay and uh, what we can then do is uh, we can then crop it so i'm just going to put a crop in here okay uh, and then I'm just going to refine the crop by just going transform selection and I can obviously just refine that crop nice and carefully just be careful it's quite difficult to see the exact border of this where the green is so just be careful of that uh, it's going to go to here I might try and crop that a bit better there we go Okay, and then what I want to do is just go uh, image, hang on, if I go enter, that's going to go image trim, or in fact actually, sorry, image crop, okay, and it'll just crop it down to our, our, our selection there. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and save that, so I'm going to go file, save as, and I'm going to save this, not as a Photoshop file, but as a... Uh, HDR file. There are there are other formats like OpenEXR which can deal with high dynamic range images, um, but uh, this is um, uh, but this this uh, and TIFFs as well. Uh, but this seems to be the most widely compatible. So this is what I tend to use when I'm dealing with images, uh, high dynamic range images. Okay, so I'm going to click HDR uh, and just go save. Uh, in fact, I'll just call it Shot One. Just go save. Okay, and then it would have saved that image out. So, uh, and you can see it. Uh, there we are. We've got our HDR image here. Okay, um, and then we just do the same process with these three images. Okay, but again, if you did Magic Lantern and you had nine images, then you would just do the same process, but obviously just import the nine images for your shot rather than the three images. Okay, so that's um, creating the images, and in the next step, what we're going to do is bring those into Nuke.